The story begins with Junichi Hashiba, a high school boy returning to his high school after their term vacation. It's his first day of school, and when he arrives, he sees that practically all of his classmates have gotten cuffed up, leaving him as the sole single student. He then enters the classroom to meet his friends Shenpei, Keigo, and Minoru. While they're lamenting their inability to find girlfriends during the break, Junichi soon joins them and expresses his belief that making girlfriends in high school is simpler. However, he learns he's still uncuffed and is concerned about the situation. Just then, Junichi's childhood friend Nene sneaks up on him and hands over the lunchbox he forgot at home. She's got this curious look in her eyes, trying to drop some hints and flirt a little. But let's be honest, with her cherubic face, Junichi's radar doesn't even ping. He casually brushes her off, leaving her in the dust. After Nene takes off, Junichi's buddies encircle him, giving him the business for being approached by a pint-sized charmer. Setting the record straight, Junichi spills that Nene's just a childhood buddy, like a little sister, nothing more. Hold on to your lunch trays because bam, the guys get even more jazzed up. Now they're begging Junichi for the inside scoop on Nene. It turns out they've fallen head over heels for Nene's milkmakers. While Junichi's mates are daydreaming about cuffing Nene, another girl, Girl, Kashi Yui, pipes up using Junichi's first name like they've been chums forever. She's all about studying together and being class buddies, leaving Junichi bewildered since he's not exactly a smooth operator when it comes to the ladies. Fast forward a bit and Kashi takes off. That's when Shenpei, ever the commentator, starts critiquing Kashi's assets, claiming they're on the smaller side. Junichi, irritated, snags Shinpei and lays down the law. You can't judge a book by its cover, especially regarding a girl's frontage. But Keigo and Minoru have a different playbook, insisting that the simpler a girl looks, the purer she is. Next thing you know, the trio is huddled in a corner, flipping through adult magazines. Junichi, beat red, tries to put the brakes on this show and tell, but his pals convince him to grab a mag and join the party. Just when Junichi reluctantly picks one up, in walks Yame Yukana, the boss gal of the class. Panic sets in, and Junichi tosses the mag like it's on fire. Guess where it lands? Right by Yukana's feet. She gives it a glance, shoots them a look of pure disdain, and walks off, calling them disgusting. Post-class, Junichi is still feeling the heat from the magazine debacle and contemplates apologizing to Yukana. But his buddies, in their infinite wisdom, suggest he apologize and pop the big question. Why? Yukana's known for shuffling through boyfriends, and they figure she'll take Junichi up on his offer for a romantic escapade. Much to Junichi's chagrin, his pals strong-arm him into it. They stuff a love letter into Yukana's locker, signed, sealed, and delivered with Junichi's name on it. Cut to the next scene, Yukana reads the note and decides to meet up with our flustered hero. Junichi's jaw hits the floor as Yukana the Heartbreaker turns on the charm, but before she can say a word, he drops to his knees and apologizes. Channeling his friend's questionable advice, he not only asks for forgiveness, but also proposes a date. Hold your horses, though. Yukana's not having it. She tells Junichi to stand up, but he's planted, not wanting to miss the scenery from down there. The kicker? Yukana catches on that Junichi's eyes are wandering south, and she teases him about it. Later, when she discovers Junichi's still rocking the V-card, Yukana decides to play puppet master with his emotions. She squats down in front of him, setting the stage for an unexpected twist. She grabs his hand, pulls him closer, and with a playful smile, accepts the proposal for the long-awaited date. Ecstatic with joy, Junichi can't contain his excitement and lets out a triumphant scream upon hearing Yukana's acceptance of his proposal. As night falls, Junichi, still grappling with the reality of Yukana's positive response, attempts to get some shut-eye. But the disbelief lingers. The following day on his way to school, Junichi's elation is shadowed by worry about how Yukana might tarnish his school's reputation. However, his friends surprise him with unwavering support, promising to stand by his side through thick and thin. Suddenly, the camaraderie takes a turn when Yukana sends a sizzling selfie, prompting a swift change in his friends' attitudes. They feign ignorance of Junichi and prepare to make a quick exit. However, Junichi drops the bomb that he and Yukana haven't kissed yet, leading Shinpei to suggest a karaoke date night. Despite initial hesitation, Junichi succumbs to his friend's assurance that karaoke offers a prime opportunity for intimacy. Shortly after, Junichi nervously enters the classroom, contemplating inviting Yukana for a karaoke date. Kashi attempts small talk, but Junichi brushes her off. Just as Yukana enters, she grabs Junichi's hand and publicly declares that they are indeed a couple, leaving the entire class in shock. After school, Junichi's friends abandon him, leaving him alone in a classroom. Attempting to join them, Junichi finds himself shunned due to jealous glances from multiple girls. Yukana appears, and they head outside, where Nene confronts them. Yukana reveals their relationship, breaking Nene's heart, and she flees in disdain. In the next scene, Yukana invites 
Junichi to karaoke. Imagining intimate moments based on his friend's advice, Junichi is taken aback when Yukana focuses on singing and spending quality time. Despite an attempt to kiss her, Yukana calls attention to his nose hair, ending the moment in embarrassment. Yukana expresses enjoyment of their time together, promising to go out with him again. Unbeknownst to them, Yukana's friend Renko keeps a watchful eye on them. The following morning, Junichi discovers a love letter in his locker, initially suspecting a prank by his friends. Taking it seriously, he realizes he must inform Yukana before pursuing any other girl. Pressure from his friends pushes him to meet the letter's sender. Surprisingly, the sender is Renko, Junichi's childhood friend. Expecting a cute girl, Renko is shocked to find Junichi. She playfully teases him, discovering he's still a virgin. Caught off guard, Junichi attempts to escape, but stumbles. Renko takes advantage, aggressively seducing him. In an unexpected twist, Yukana arrives and confronts Junichi for apparent infidelity. However, she reveals that she and Renko are childhood friends, dismissing the incident as harmless teasing. Unbeknownst to Yukana, Renko secretly harbors intention of sabotaging their relationship after their departure. When Junichi, Yukana, and Renko decide to explore the city through bowling, shopping, and dining, Renko seizes every opportunity to wedge herself between Junichi and Yukana. As they're leaving the shopping mall, two cheeky dudes approach, teasing Yukana and inviting her to join their fun squad. Junichi tries to defend, but he's swiftly sidelined. Shockingly, Renko decides to teach the teasing twosome a lesson and drags one into a corner, unleashing a beatdown. In the next scene, a mortified Junichi, heading home, berates himself for not being Yukana Yukana's knight in shining armor. Just then, Renko pops up and hauls Junichi into his house. She attempts to rev up her seduction engine once more, but despite her efforts and Junichi's dating motives, he stands firm. Junichi's heart, it seems, is reserved exclusively for Yukana. Not taking rejection lightly, Renko goes into a rage, vowing to keep Junichi from getting cozy with Yukana, as she's quite smitten with her. Shortly after Junichi's scream subsides, Yukana arrives, stumbling upon an awkward Junichi and an irate Renko. Misinterpreting the situation, Yukana assumes Junichi's up to some cheating shenanigans. Renko intervenes, explaining that it was merely a loyalty test. Yukana, touched by Renko's loyalty check antics, tears up, expressing her love for her dear friend. The next morning, Junichi, thinking he's done with Renko's torment, is taken by surprise when she appears, warning him to keep mum about her feelings towards Yukana. Little do they know, Kashi is looking nearby, still grappling with disbelief over Junichi dating someone other than her. At night, Junichi delves into gal research, stumbling upon an internet personality who criticizes others while her fans cheer. He decides to study her movements to navigate Yukana and Renko territory more smoothly. The following day, Kashi arrives at school in high spirits, treating her friends, especially Junichi, like her loyal subjects in her imaginary kingdom. Meanwhile, Keigo brings up the online girl he saw last night, sparking a revelation for Shinpei, who recognizes her from elsewhere. During lunch with Yukana and Renko, Kashi approaches Junichi for a chat. Despite Despite his willingness to help, Renko shoes her away, claiming they're busy. After class, Yukana leaves with her friends and Kashi seizes the opportunity to pull Junichi aside for help with teacher-assigned tasks. Unable to decline, Junichi finds himself in a cafe where Yui disapproves of Yukana while Junichi grapples with relationship confusion. Later that night, Shinpei connects the dots, realizing the girl from the live stream is the same person he recognized. The next day, Kashi seeks Junichi's help again and Shinpei, attempting to unveil a mystery, records Kashi for a picture comparison. Meanwhile, Junichi follows Kashi to the rooftop, scratching his head over what's in store. Meanwhile, Shinpei spills the beans to Keigo and Minaru about his jaw-dropping revelation. Boa and Kashi are two peas in a pod. Armed with their sneaky snapshots and a shared disdain for the world, the trio is in shock. Just when they're getting cozy with this newfound knowledge, Renko barges in, demanding they spill the details of their eureka moment. On a totally different wavelength, Kashi sidles up to Junichi, confessing her affection and proposing they become an item. But here's the hitch. She wants him to kick Yukana to the curb. Junichi, being the good guy he is, gently turns down Kashi's love plea, making it crystal clear that Yukana's the one for him. This rejection, however, transforms Kashi into a fury of discontent, ranting that Junichi should obey her like a faithful dog. Adding fuel to the fire, she reveals she recorded their cafe convo and threatens to spill the beans to Yukana if he refuses 
her. In a panic, Junichi, realizing he spilled relationship tea at the cafe, pleads with Kashi to hit delete on that damning footage. Just when despair is about to set in, Renko and the gang swoop in like relationship superheroes to the rescue. Renko, already privy to Kashi's dual identity, lays down the law, warning her to back off or face a class-wide revelation. Stunned, Kashi beats a hasty retreat, leaving Junichi with the memory card of their incriminating cafe chat as a parting gift. As Kashi makes her exit, Junichi's friend casually drops the bomb that they're onto her secret identity, leaving her red-faced. With Kashi out of the picture, Yukana strides in, relieved to find Junichi still head over heels for her. And that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. We really appreciate your support.